We got the baby room ready and family members are getting excited. Just kind of getting used to the idea of being pregnant, getting used to the idea of having twins. The doctor kind of said, what I see is um, a diaphragmatic hernia on your son. It was pretty heart-wrenching. We really didn't know how to, how to feel. We didn't know how to react. And then when they told us, you know, possible CDH, we were like, what is that? A congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a disease where the diaphragm does not fully develop. In my son's case, uh, the intestines, the stomach, the liver uh, migrated north to where his heart uh, was originally located. So his left lung was um, very, very small. It was almost like a bud when he was born. Um, we started hearing about ECMO when we talked with the doctors. The big name is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, um, but it pretty much is a machine that does the work of your heart and lungs for you. ECMO refers to the use of a heart-lung machine which has been modified so that it can be used for days or weeks, even months of time, without damaging the blood. Even when we discussed it, we're like, this machine is gonna do what? <laughs> this machine is going to save our son? Because when he was born, he, they took him first to get him ready to go on ECMO. And two minutes later after his birth, our other son was born, and it was um, one of the best and worst days of my life. So he was on ECMO and he was on there for a few days. They came to us and said, you know what? Your son's not gonna be able to be taken off this machine yet. We we're gonna put him back on. Mind you, your son's gonna have about a five to 10% chance of living after we put him on the second time. We still had faith in that machine to pull him through it and it, it did, it worked. It makes you feel great, of course, to realize that you've done something or contributed to a bit of technology that, that's been uh, successful in prolonging lives or saving lives of 60,000 patients. And uh, here in our laboratory, we're studying technology related to ECMO. One of those projects, um, one of the most interesting, it's called the artificial placenta. So if a baby is born significantly earlier, very, very premature, you can keep this fetus alive um, at an age when that was just not even conceivable. And what I've been doing in the lab for the past couple of years is working with the artificial lung. Um, so I was helping to test membranes that reduce clotting in the lung to make it more efficient. And now I'm helping to actually like redesign a new artificial lung. Part of our good fortune is that we're here at the University of Michigan where there are many, many undergraduate and graduate students who are interested in biomedical research. Some of them come to work in our lab. Uh, and this year we happen to have students who were on ECMO as newborns here in our, in our own hospital. I started off here at University of Michigan, which saved my life, and now that I'm giving back through it through this lab, so I've come full circle. Our laboratory is uh, financed primarily through research grants and on philanthropy. Donors, they understand that we have to keep the laboratory going between grants and so we rely heavily on those supporters who support our laboratory. I don't think he would have made it without ECMO. We'll always have a connection to U of M. As long as they're there, we'll always have a connection. They're our family now. We owe the world to U of M. We owe the world to Dr. Bartlett. We owe the world to ECMO. This simple machine, this not so simple machine, we owe our life to. Seeing our son now the way he is, it, it, it kind of makes you forget, just for a split second, what he went through. We kind of tossed around names here and there and stuff, and after the first visit to the University of Michigan, we had seen a banner of a child, and it said, Hail to the Victors. My husband, he kind of said, hey, well, what about Victor? The odds were against us the whole way, but Victor fought, and it's our little Victor.